So my winter project is to create a checking app for for the chapel attendance, and um, I created both a student version of the app and a teacher version. This so this one here is the student app. Basically, uh, when you open the app, it will ask you to sign in with your Trinity Pauling. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I don't know if I can sign because so like my my MacBook does not have a VPN so oh, okay. I don't know if I if I it can open this page or not. That's okay. Um, so so I I cannot use the simulator because the the the, the MacBook cannot go to uh cannot go to cannot go to Google. Login, so I will just show the 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 the, the storyboard uh, to you. So so basically, this one this this page is the uh, the one that the user will see when they first uh, go into the app. Um, there's a this white box here is what's called a um, G uh, G sign button or something like that. Basically, uh, if you put it there and then um, add a few functions to it, I cannot remember what I exactly I wrote, but basically uh, if you add this button here, uh, the user will be able to sign in with their, uh, with their Google account. So like if you check the the emulator, uh, anyway, let's do that later. Uh, and then once you sign in, you need to restart your program uh, because like the, the app needs to refresh to needs to refresh to know that the user has signed in, the student checker has signed. In. So I also had a text view here saying that to restart the app after signing. Um, and then after you log into the app, you can, there will be a tab view, a two pages tab view. The first one here is where all the, uh, all the student names will be, uh, will be shown. So, so when you, like if you, if the user first use this app, uh, this will be an empty, you know, I, I really wish I can show the actual emulator one instead of seeing this, but I don't know. Um, uh, but basically that's where the student names will be shown. Um, and if a user first login for like, this is their first time using it, this will be an empty list uh, with no names on it. The users can use the second page here to add the name of the, the students they need to check and their grades. And then if they click add name, the names will be stored on this list uh, forever. So like even if they open, close the app and reopen the app, the names will still be there. And um, this clear list button is to uh, allow the users to clear the the student list on, on this page because if they uh, have like a list change or they just added the wrong name, they can fix that. So so after after the student checker adds all the names to the list, uh, the, the student checker, uh, I don't know how to, but like, you know, like how when you uh, swap the, the list, like on, Google, on, on iPhone, you can, Uh, let's see what can I use to show. Yeah, I guess this one. I I really didn't uh, foresee that this emulator can work. So like on I guess, I, but like on on iPhone, you know, like if you swap if you swap. Uh, on a list, on an item of the list to the left, there's like a delete option on here. So like if you 
if, for example, this is a list, this is a name here, and then you swap the name to the left, you can delete the delete this name, and uh, you can delete this name. So, so basically, the student tracker, if they see each student uh, on the list, is if if a student on the list is in chapel, they can delete that student's name and uh, the only ones remaining on this list will be the absent student list. So then with only those names, the student checker can hit this send list, but send list button. And this one will uh, send the absent student list to an online database to the Firebase, uh, which is the part that I need to share. I need to share this screen, but it, we can, um, how do I change to to this computer? You should be able to just click share screen because I think that one's the host right now. Uh, it's there just, we go. Okay. Good stuff. So, so the names, uh, the absent student names, will then be uh, sent sent to uh, to this uh, Firebase project, which is an online database. Uh, I first used this 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 database to store uh, all the student information like these are all the, the the information about students but then i just and then my first plan was to let the student checkers to select from these uh lit from these names to add to their checklist but then i just thought it was too complicated so but anyway so like the send list button will add a name to this absent field of this database. So like, uh, um, like if I say some student, uh, like this is the, the, this first number is the grade of the student. And then the second one is the name of the student. I just create some random ones here when I was testing. Uh, and then Another feature that I added after the first draft presentation was this checker field. Uh, basically, that's I think that that was Tianwei's uh, suggestion. Basically, uh, we want to make sure that that only uh, only the student checkers are using our program. So uh, when I log in to the when the when the users log in to the app. I, I I added a step so the the program can remember the the names of the, the the email name of this student checker of this user of the app, and then whenever this user adds to the absent list, the the name will be stored in this checker field, so we know who are using the app. And um, um, that's one thing I added after the first draft presentation um, and let's see I let me and how do I give this you need to go back to the other one I think I yeah how to yeah I think you're good now uh, and that's that's basically the the function of this uh, student version uh, so so like uh, basically it's to uh, to it's first is users will log in with their Google account and then they will add name uh, add the names for their checklist for for only for once uh, when they first use this program and then for all the remaining times they will just need to and they also only need to log in to this app for once. And then for the other remaining times, they will just need to uh, swap the names off from the list and send list to the Firebase uh, database. 
and then for for the other day they just do this again they, they close the app and reopen the app that list will be uh will be a, a full one so so that's basically the functionality of the student app and the teacher app i think i can show the teacher app because i didn't uh add a logging um, function to the teacher app but i think i need to I guess my MacBook is way too old. But uh, but basically the teacher app was, uh, I think almost the same as the one I showed you guys during the first draft presentation. And uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't add much to the teacher app. Um, so it's just, a list and then I, I, I don't know but can you remind me is the teacher app is that for like mr keel and mr collins to see attendance or is that i can use yeah, it for, for that's for mr keel and mr collins to see attendance like, the app, there's only uh, there's only one page that's a, a basically there's only a list and then a button uh, the list will show all the names from the absent student uh, from the absent field in the firebase database and then uh, the the teachers can also like uh, uh, delete the names if they see the student or if they see the student at their dorms um, and then the button is to clear the list so like uh, to update the list so like if uh, mr keel deletes a name from the absent student list and then and then wants to update the list they, he can just click the button and then the list on the firebase database will also be updated like the the name he crossed off will disappear right um, and then would um Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. I had a, you just made me think of another question. Um, oh, so does the does it have to go through Mr. Collins before? Does it have to go through his app before it goes to Firebase, or does it go to Firebase and then update if Mr. Collins does something? Uh, yeah. So so it's from the student app directly to the firebase okay. and then mr mr keel or mr collins app is to update the, the list okay. on the firebase database and, and then um, can i ask more questions or are you so yeah. so so with firebase and forgive me if you you asked this back in um if i asked this and you answered it back in in november i have all my notes obviously back at school um does Firebase have an unlimited capacity? Is that why you picked that storage? Yeah. Uh, because that's uh, well, one it's online, and the second thing it's free, and also I think it has. I don't know if it's unlimited, but it's uh, it's definitely a pretty large storage amount. Okay. So yeah, and so also big enough that you wouldn't run it with your all you're really storing is one day's worth of absences which isn't a large file i imagine yeah i think yeah and then uh after mr keel clears the list or mr collins clears the list on their phone does that erase that record of that day or is there could you go in and could i sort could i go to like mike yan and see how many times throughout the year you missed a chapel yeah i didn't I didn't add that function, but I, yeah. So it's day. It's really a day to day thing. Yeah, it's already a day to day. Thing. Okay. And then the only other thing I had is, would how hard would it be to add a 
I guess a second menu on your storyboard. So before you go to add add kids or like add a roster or or um, select that they're there with the swipe, which I think is real. I like the, the swipe. Um, could you could you have a separate thing for each event? So could so what I'm thinking of is like for could you have a chapel checker? And then could you have that person also be doing attendance for if they're, let's say that they're a, um, let's say that they're a proctor on dorm, could they do like 10 o'clock yeah. check-in on that and have a separate list housed under the same device? So, so actually, I don't know if I still have that version, but, but, but basically um, on my first version of the app, there's, uh, one more page between the login, the Google login, and then the the two tab view. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one like I I create a page which has one button. If you and if you click the button, you can go to this. You can go to the chapel checking the the chapel checking views, and then uh, there's also a go back button for the on the chapel checking. Like those pages, so so. Let's see if I can. So, I don't have that one, but I have this one. It's sort of similar, I think. I let me share this. Screen. I think I really think I know you're you're uh, frustrated with the your. Uh, uh, I didn't foresee uh, this. But basically, that's this one is not related to my uh, SIP, but uh, that's sort of similar to what I was talking about. Okay. So, so like on on this one, when I first log in after the user logs in, uh, there's this page, uh, which only has one button because I only created the function for checkout. Okay. But basically, if uh, that's this one is uh, I created this one. Uh, for my app development class, it was like to this one is to check out for for town privilege, and oh. um, yeah. So if you click on the checkout uh, button, it will bring you to this tab view. This tab view is similar to the one my ch uh, my chapel checking use. So so there's the checkout tab, which uh, which basically if you hit if you hit sends, it will send your uh, name and your checkout time, which is like when you leave the school to go to the town, uh, the time to another Firebase database, and then this you can and the user can switch between the checkout and checking tab. So the checking is like to send the when you come back to school uh, to the Firebase, and then there's a return mm -hmm. button on on these on these pages. So like if you hit return, it will bring you back to this one. So it's like, it's sort of like the, the, the function you're talking about. So like yeah. if the students use, want to use, so let's say if there are a few other uh, functions for this program, like checkout, and then there's the, uh, cha uh, the chapel attendance function, then if the student hits the checkout, it can bring them to this town, town thing here. And then if they want to go back, they just hit the return. They will return to this page. And then if they want to do the chapel attendance, let's say there's another button here, they can mm -hmm. click on this button and then it will bring them to the chapel attendance thing. Gotcha. Yeah. I, so, I really like, sorry to interrupt if you were continuing, but I, I know you're frustrated with the, your, that you can't get onto the actual um, yeah. simulator, but, that that's not your fault at all. The I really like what you've done because I'm one in particular who I love having data. So I think this is fantastic in that you're you're storing this data of I know it's a mundane thing, but storing data of chapel attendance over and over and over and over again it's gonna reduce that human error of, if you're, if you're just circling names and handing them to Mr. Collins, it, 
I really think it adds the accountability of the chapel checker because you're tracking who that chapel checker was with each absence. But it also adds the accountability of it does track over and over and over again and makes Mr. Collins' job easier and that he doesn't have to manually put everything in. I really like being done. I like the town one too. I didn't see I hadn't seen the town check in and check out. It would be really um it would be really interesting if you could merge everything like you were saying on that that ch uh checkout screen, I think. If you could have checkout, if you could have if you have all of the TP app that all the TP students had, there was checkout, uh, check in, checkout chapel, class meeting, all these different things. How is under the same under the same app? The only other question I have, and then I'll let other people jump in. Would it? How hard would it be to take your data from Firebase and then put it in? Yeah, Mr. Mead brought up a good point. You could also put in your Mr. Collins' vacation um, questions. How hard would it be to take the data from Firebase and put it into either an Excel or a Google Sheet so that everything's housed into one spot? Uh, let me see. Um, I, how do I start it? Which you want to be the host? Oh, sorry, you have it. I, I, Here, I'll make it. You want to be the host of the other one? Yeah, yeah, there you go. I think, um, so, so, uh, the Firebase allows you to export your database to a JSON file, and then, um, I think you can just convert. Convert JSON to uh, the Excel. Yeah, or CSV is fine too. So, so yeah. So basically, if you want to convert this data to to a CSV or Excel, you can just uh, export the JSON file yep. and then uh, upload it to to convert to to an online converter. I think then you have to. Uh, the CSV. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then you have the CSV. These are like the the the, the database of the the student. That's just the data. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that, still, that's, that's the apps and then the checker here. I really so, like that. I know that's a couple of steps, but it still is. I'd imagine. I don't know Mr. Collins' job, but I imagine just having that database on his end that shows who was absent and being able to just upload that every day and keep a running Excel doc of it. I like that a lot. All right, I, I'll, I'll be quiet now and let you, let other. Mike, you know I like this project. <clears throat> um, and and um, I, I think that it's, it's really good. Uh, are you, is this operational for both um, Apple and, and, and non-Apple products right now? So, so the, the app I showed were mm -hmm. only for iOS device. Yeah. I also created an Android version, um, but uh, the Android, but like I didn't. So, so, cause like after I was doing the SIP, you know, like, Alan was also doing the, the app development scene, right? Yeah. And then he was doing the, the Android apps. So I just uh, focused on the iOS ones. Okay. Yeah. So he somewhere might have a Android app that does yeah. pretty much the same thing. Uh, but I, I don't, because I, I think um, we focus more on different aspects of app development. Uh, he, he, like, I think he emphasized more on like the, the, the user interface, like how, how the app looks like he also, so, so like on his app, I, I think, I mean, I mean, I may not be correct, but I think, cause I saw his app like very early, like in September on his app, if you want to add a student to the list, 
you can actually see like not only you can select a name like you can select the student name from like a list and then uh you you can also see the you know the the, the picture we took for for our mm -hmm. i guess tp card or or just for our tp account you like on his app you can also see the the image of each student so like if if it's a new checker who doesn't know mm -hmm. this the student he needs to check in he can actually see how the what the student looks like on on the on Alan's app uh but uh he, like that's like features like these i did not include on my app uh but like features like google login those things uh i think he didn't include it in his app but you know that's like these things but i guess the main like the main function are basically the same it's just the, the details that are different so how quickly could say mr collins access the information from the firebase database i think as long as like so so when so when the firebase database updates mm -hmm. uh and af after the firebase database updates mr collins app needs to be updated to see the new changes on the database so uh i guess like after he closed and reopened the app the new changes will show up like i i try to add a function so so the the teacher app can update whenever there's a change on the database but i didn't really implement the this this function successfully so so now he has to close and reopen the app to update the list on his app and are there any ways to see who is on lists for folks who don't submit their absent list uh no i it you can only so so far you can only see who who submitted the, the absent list okay mike this is a like you know and, and then I'm, i have one other question just because and i i think you know the slight evolution of some of these ideas of, of where the even trying to make this came from right like i was walking by the app development class one day yeah. i was trying to remember whether you were in the class yet or not were you in that class yeah yeah. yeah i was seeing that class so i you remember it was what it was jay Wen and and, and victor Zhu. <laughs> no i was i was in the class the next year okay yeah. <laughs> and, and so for several years people have been passing this on um is your intention and, and and to pass this on to another app developer as we continue to refine it because you know even when every time you hear this like you know mr mead's like hey maybe we could have vacation input maybe we could have checkout and, and there's you know there are several apps out there that we've looked at yeah. you know those companies actually make a substantial amount of money after over for out from schools um, trying to put it together but are you passing this on to someone uh so right now not really i guess okay. but i can like i can send a zip file of the code for student teacher app and to to maybe to mr to mr metcalf yeah i think I, I think that would be good to not recreate it because i imagine some of the stuff that Jay Wynn and Victor pulled together was some of the foundation for some of the stuff you did, and then you took it to a substantially um, further level. But is that is it is am I say is that a correct um, guess? So, I mean, I don't know. I I guess so. So this one was based on the app, uh, the app development like I created with okay. the other students in the app development class. So I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. That's absolutely. I think it's awesome. I, I, I love this app. I really do. I love the work you've done. I, I also think it's a lot cleaner than it was in the fall, the student side of things. It was after you go and we realize, oh, man, you could put the vacation stuff for Mr. Collins or you could give it to coaches to do their check-in of their teams. 
Are we going to have the ability to build off it easily? Yeah, I'll ask them succinctly. Mike, two questions. One is, is this app ready to go now or does it still need more work? And then two, uh, is it, assume it's ready to go, are we able to build onto it without having to pull you out of class at UCLA to update it? So for instance, if a coach wanted to use it for checking in or rec sports wanted to use it for checking in, can we build these subsets easily or do we need Mike Yan? Uh, so, so first one, first question, uh, if you want to use the, you, if you want to use the iOS app, you need to, you, like, if you want to put apps on app store, you actually need to, uh, purchase what's called a developer account. It's like, uh, $99 per year. So I, I don't think that's too expensive. That's like a hundred dollars per year. Uh, and then if you don't have the, the, the account, you can download from the computer to your, to your device. Uh, and then it will be like a 14 day trial period. So like you can use it for 14 days, but after the 14th day, uh, this app will expire. And then you have to, I think you have to redownload it once more. And then if you redownload it, you can use it for another 14 days. Uh, but I'm not sure. Or maybe you can just use it for 14. If we paid the $99 and put it on the App Store, though, uh, could Avon? Yeah, use you can. It? Yeah, you can use it forever. And then. No, but other if, schools could they use it, or could we? Would it be limited to us? I hate the share yeah. thing. If you if you put on App Store and if other people like download the app, they can use it, like because that's on the App Store. I just think that's how it works. But wouldn't it only, couldn't you make it so that only a Trinity Pauling Gmail works for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, the code uh, on the code uh, for, for Google logging. It only allows uh, at Trinity Pauling dot org account, Gmail account. Yeah. So, so other people could download it, but it wouldn't be much use for them. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, so if, if like, if we put, if we actually put the app on App Store, I think the, the best, the best uh, com combination is to put the student one on the App Store. And then for the teacher one, you just download the app from the MacBook to Mr. Q or Mr. Collins' phone. Uh, so it's like the teacher one, Right now, it doesn't have a login uh, protection, but if other students want to add to the app, they can add the login protection. And then, uh, so about if others can use this, uh, I can, like if I, if I send a code to Mr. Metcalf, and then like if he keeps the code, then you know when other students want to add it, the code, they can always add it. They just, they just, you know, they just ask Mr. Metcalf for permission, um, and like I think what the the this year's Aptivum class is doing is like they are uploading the the code to a website called GitHub. So like GitHub, um, you can create a repository, and you can always upload code and files to the repository. So. The, the code will store there forever. And um, if like the owner of the repository and the, the people who the owner gives permission to, they can download the code to their own computer and uh, add edit the code, and then they can resubmit the code to that repository. So like, um, but so, so that's like uh, how, how multi multiple students can uh, cooperate to 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 uh, work on one single app development project. Um, so yeah, so if I give the code to to Mr. Metcalf, then and he puts it to to GitHub or just put it in his own computer, then um, you know people can just add its code without the need to find me, yeah. 
another question, Mike, and then I, I think that's it. Um, you have it right now where every student gets a number, or that's what I'm assuming, because I saw the numbers going down to 300. Oh, yeah. So, so that number is no longer useful. That's the one. So, so basically, my first version of on the on my first version of the app, uh, the student checker actually did not uh, enter the names to the list. They actually need to go. Uh, they 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 would search for the for the student from from the the three hundred student yeah. list, and that's why. Like I I just felt it was way too uh, inconvenient, so I just changed that uh, impl implementation to now the student checker um, at just enter the name by themselves and enter the name to the list. The, the reason I asked the question is every student at Trinity Pauling has a unique number called an ST number, student number. So uh -huh. your, your like is ST11045. They're five digit numbers. Everybody has one and you have it forever. Uh -huh. Does it make sense for this app to have that number embedded in it so it, it then lets you talk to the school's program? So it, for instance, you could download the entire attendance right into what we call FileMaker. It's what lets our, our different programs talk to each other throughout the school. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't know about this, so. No, no, you wouldn't know about that. I'm just wondering, is, is that something you were kind of hoping there was, or you don't really care? So, it so easier. I think, so like, because now the app only has this one, function is for is to check in check students in for attendance so um so like these 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 um these these things like i don't the app really the, the app doesn't really need those uh, student number things but i think like <clears throat> if you really want to create an app that has all the different functions like uh, an app that is capable of uh, attendance taking, uh, time privilege, time sign out, and you know, uh, vocation things. Then um, I I think you like the student number will be useful because you want to because you want to differentiate those student checker from those like the the normal students and uh, the students in each grade so so like you don't really want a non-student checker to have the the ability to open the the chapel attendance function of the app um but you know that's but like if for for only for this app that i'm writing now um maybe the 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 number thing is not too important at least in my opinion i don't okay. know Good job. That's wow. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed, Mike. And as I said before, I, I know you're frustrated about the the great firewall knocking down your Gmail, but don't. But like during the fall, don't stress. You know, during me. the fall, during the fall, I was I, I at least during the fall, I presented the app that the simulator uh, mm -hmm. once. You know, so I don't. All right. Any last questions, Mr. Keel? No, Mike. You're, nice job, man. Very good job.